Welcome to No Place Like Home, the radio show, coming to you on WRXB 1590 AM, 96.5 FM, and Pinellas County Connection TV. This program is presented to you as an opportunity to hear information that can help you fulfill the dream of owning your very own home. We also share information about upcoming special events and programs to help you enjoy the good life in Pinellas County, as well as other items of interest. The sponsor of this program is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County, which offers the first-time home buyer program. I'm Carmen Lemberg, alongside Julian Hills, your host for today's show. Good morning, Julian, and uh, happy belated birthday, I hear. Uh, who told you? A little birdie. Oh, well, I'm going to have to go uh, pluck that bird, but thank you very much. I can't believe it's been a year since my last one. Too fun, too fun. <laughs> they go by quickly. <laughs> well, today's show is about protecting your home and preventing crime through environmental design. Today we'll be speaking with deputies Huey and Skipper from the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office. Before we begin our discussion, I have a few things to announce. The first thing I want to announce is, is that anyone needing health care can enroll into the uh, Affordable Care Act. Um, open enrollment began November 1st, again my birthday, and there's a shorter window for the enrollment. It closes December 15th, so anyone needing help with that should call um, the their local health care navigators and and if they need that number, it's 727-464-8411, 727-464-8411. Or they can go online and talk to a navigator at www.pinellascounty.org slash navigators. So we just wanted to make that announcement. And I know you have a message from our sponsor, the Housing Finance Authority. I do. Thanks, Julian. <laughs> the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County is offering the First Time Home Buyers Program, your key to home ownership, helping people in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties make their dreams of home ownership a reality. The First Time Home Buyers Program is for individuals who have never owned a home, have not owned a home in the last three years, or veterans. The HFA, working through a specialized group of lenders, offers a low rate on its 30 year fixed rate mortgage, and we can help you with down payment and closing costs as well. To get your key to home ownership, visit www.pinellascounty.org forward slash. HFA, as in Housing Finance Authority. For more information or comments about the show, please give us a call at 727-223-6419. Julian? Well, luckily I don't have to talk about myself and my birthday anymore. <laughs> it's my pleasure to introduce our guest. Deputy Jessica Huey was born in Dunedin and raised in Pinellas County. She's a graduate of Clearwater High School and attended St. Petersburg College. She started her career in 2002 with the Clearwater Police Department, where she she worked as a communications dispatcher for two years. In June of 2004, Deputy Huey was offered a job with the Florida Highway Patrol as a dispatcher. From there, she pursued her career as a law enforcement officer. Deputy Huey's first assignment with the Florida Highway Patrol landed her in Hillsborough County, where she worked as a state trooper for six years. In 2013, her husband was promoted to the rank of sergeant with the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, and at that time, the opportunity presented itself to apply with the Sheriff's Office. Deputy Huey completed field training and, released, and was released to a solo patrol. In April 2014, she was selected to represent the Sheriff's Office in her current role as a crime Prevention and Community Awareness Deputy. Deputy Charles Skipper is a native of Florida and began his career in 1990 at the Marion County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Skipper worked as both a corrections and patrol deputy in Ocala until starting with Pinellas County Sheriff's Office in 1994. In Pinellas, he started as a corrections deputy in the jail before being transferred to the patrol division and as a road deputy in 1998. Since then, he also worked as a field training deputy and a traffic homicide investigator. In addition, he has been assigned to the traffic enforcement unit and the community policing unit. He has been working in the crime prevention unit since 2013. In his current assignment, he has earned both the crime prevention practitioner and the crime prevention through environmental design certifi certifications from the state of Florida. 
So first of all, welcome. And will you please give us an overview of the programs the Crime Prevention Unit includes and services the unit provides to citizens? Oh, Good Jessica. morning, Julian. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. So our, um, our unit, we offer a variety of different topics. We try to tailor our presentations to the audience that we're speaking to. Um, we often speak to neighborhood watch groups um, on burglary prevention, personal safety, avoiding scams, identity theft, and internet safety. Uh, these topics mentioned are things that people can relate to, and most people are either a victim or know of someone who has had their home broken into or maybe taken advantage of um, on the internet or maybe a victim of identity theft. Wow. You guys cover a lot of stuff. Lots. We sure do. <laughs> so first off, I'd also like to say thank you both for your service. We really appreciate everything that you do for the community. And now we you talk about this crime prevention through environmental design. What exactly does that encompass? Well, Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, the, uh, the acronym for that is SEPTED. And the premise of SEPTED contends that the best way to prevent crime uh, is to design the total environment uh, in order to reduce opportunities for crime. Many people simply look at target hardening a location, which is uh, the most obvious means to uh, prevent crime. Uh, but it just simply attacks the problem with like a fortress or bunker mentality. It's a great concept, but it doesn't take into account the movement or behavior of people. Basically, it's, uh, it's limited to making it difficult for the criminal to physically, you know, enter the, uh, the location. And examples would be like locks and walls, bars, you know, alarms. Uh, but, you know, do you really want to live or work in a fortress? Uh, or a compound, and of course not. So SEPTED uh, deviates a little bit from that, and it's a little more encompassing. Uh, it includes a physical design, social management, and law enforcement efforts uh, that together uh, try to produce you know, positive, you know, human behavior. Hmm. So do does this program do you look just for you know residential properties, or do you guys apply this all to commercial properties as well? Oh no, it, it applies uh, really to, to any kind of property, uh, residential or commercial. Uh, it can be eff effective in a single family home or business. It's most effective when you can get the entire community or apartment complex or the industrial park uh, to use these concepts together. Uh, it's much more effective. Well, I've never really heard of this concept before, but it sounds fascinating. Um, tell me about what you guys look for when you go out to evaluate a home or business. Uh, well, aside from you know, the obvious things like, you know, checking for the proper types of locks or vulnerable entry points. Uh, we also look for things uh, such as the outdoor lighting, the fencing, landscaping, even maintenance. Um, all these things uh, can affect one another. For example, your property may have a street light, but if there's a tree that casts a shadow over half of your property, yeah. that's a problem. Uh, another example, uh, a poorly maintained privacy fence uh, can actually attract a criminal because it's easy to breach and it can provide a great cover for criminal activity. Mm -hmm. The irony is, is that the criminal benefits from the very fence that was actually installed to keep him out. Uh, landscaping is another great tool. Uh, it, you know, it, it like to deter someone from looking in a window or access mm -hmm. to a window. Uh, for example, uh, think of a, a thick hedge row with you know, shrubs or thorny bushes about waist high, three feet wide, uh, along the side of a building. Uh, accessing these windows uh, would not be easy, and it certainly looks a lot better than having like a wall or a fence or something like that, maybe. Hmm. So, you know, before the show, we were speaking um, about, and you just mentioned it now, about criminals always look for the easiest way to commit a crime. So explain that a little more to our listeners about what they're looking for and silly things that people sometimes do that attract criminals. Absolutely. Um, you know, most criminals are looking for that opportunity. Um, they're looking for uh, an easy target, a house they can burglarize, um, a house that they can break into quickly, uh, maybe take advantage, I'm sorry, take something of value um, and leave without being detected. And of course, there are professional burglars who can gain entry into almost any home if they want, you know, and however, most criminals, they break into homes, um, they're looking for those opportunities, you know, maybe they got lucky with an open window or unlocked door. You know, of course, there's no fail-proof way to keep out a burglar, but every little bit of deterrence, it helps. So, like, keeping your garage door Absolutely. closed Absolutely. Locking night, your car doors. Locking your car. 
when the car's in the garage, don't leave the keys in the car. <laughs> yeah, and you know, uh, another thing that we see is most people, they leave their garage door openers in their vehicle. If your vehicle's left unlocked, then get to your garage door. Now they have access to your home. Yep, yep. I speak from experience there. Um, we had a break in uh, years ago. They targeted several areas, houses in our area, and um, have been watching our house. And at the time, we left our garage door open just a little bit for air circulation. And my husband was home, and they had backed up that garage door, gone under it, and he didn't hear them, but they had searched the car looking for the keys in the garage door opener. They, he had keys to other things in his toolboxes. They took all of those keys. And then they tried to get in the house, and that's when he woke up. And of course, you know, by the end he hears them speeding away from the driveway, but they did not get our car, which is what they were actually after, because they all the houses they hit that day, they took everybody's cars. And so we got lucky, and when the police finally caught the guys, they brought a garage door opener and all of these keys, and they said, do you recognize this? And we didn't even realize they were gone. We're like, oh my gosh, he said, they were gonna come back. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, eh. <laughs> so. You know, and he said all, all the other cars that day, they'd left their keys in the car in their garages. And so they, all they had to do was just get in the garage and off they went with the cars. Yeah, you'd be surprised at how many people actually leave their vehicles um, unlocked with the keys in the vehicle. We find a lot of guns that have been stolen um, that were left in unlocked vehicles, unfortunately. And they're getting into the hands of criminals. They're getting in the hands of young children as well. Oh, and it's hard to recover that hard. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Well, it sounds like a lot of these things you're talking about start with common, and I'm guilty of making some of them. As you talk about them, I'm cringing, actually. Um, but they seem like sort of common sense things that maybe due to routine or whatever, you know, we sort of forget about. Are there any other common tips that you might have um, that would help people protect their homes and business? And if so, could you say some of them? And is there a website or something that people could read more about this? Yeah. So, you know, think of it this way. If you were a burglar targeting your own home or your business, you know, how would you get in? You have to think like the criminal. What's an easy way to enter into that business or that home? Um, evaluate your, your home or your, in, or your business um, from the inside and out, maybe night and day. Do a security check. You might even try to do a mock break-in, you know, trying the window jams and loose locks on the perimeter of your home or your business. Um, and just make sure you let your neighbors know what you're up to before you go lurking in those bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, and, you know. often when we do security surveys, we see garden tools and other miscellaneous items uh, laying around, you know, that a burglar could potentially use, take advantage, and break into your home. Um, so the moral of the story is don't leave anything around your yard that might help a bad guy get into your house. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's a good moral to the story. thinking about the, the yard <laughs> tools that sometimes I don't always pick up and, and put away. Um, so if an individual or a business wanted to get in touch with you guys to come out and do an evaluation on their property, um, what do they need to do? What's the phone number? What's your website? And what can they expect when you come out? So our website, um, you can visit www.pcsoweb.com. And the phone number to our crime prevention unit is 582-2222. Go into a little bit of more detail. When you first come up to my house, what are you going to do? Well, we we like to take a sort of a uh, systematic approach, and you know we'll work around one side. We you know really prefer if the homeowners with us, and uh, you know address any concerns they've had. You know sometimes they've been a victim of a uh, of a crime, but we you know I, again it's a kind of a multifaceted thing. We're not just looking at locks and lights. But we're looking at other hazards that, you know, could be like landscaping and, and, you know, things that the criminal could hide behind or use, you know, a ladder that's left out or, or uh, something like that. Um, and then, you know, we, we, we type up a recommendation and, and you know, present that to the, uh, to the property owner. So thinking in terms of vulnerability, you mentioned fences. And so I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I put up this nice privacy fence in my backyard to keep people out. But that, in turn, then makes that probably the most vulnerable part of my house because then I have a lot of vegetation in my backyard, too. And even though I have lights, they can get back in there, creep around. The neighbors are probably used to the lights going on and off because if the wind blows the leaves and the trees around, the lights go off. And so they could play around in my backyard with nobody ever really seeing them, take all the time they wanted to break into my door and get in the house. Yeah, so security, you know, and privacy 
uh, is always kind of you know clashing uh, but really the best kind of fence is an open fence uh, certainly not for privacy and, and you know with the pool and you have to kind of make that determination but really the best kind of fence is an open fence or like a chain link fence you know like a, the rod iron type uh, fence because it doesn't provide a criminal any kind of cover it prevents a barrier it sets the boundaries that this is an area you're not supposed to be in and it causes the criminal to have to climb over it and so he clearly is in a place he's not supposed to be but once he crosses over that fence he has no cover he can still be seen by a neighbor he can still be seen by a car driving by that type of thing and he may even look even more odd being in you know this fence compound you know on a weekend at a business or something like that mm -hmm. and so it's it's very you know it's it's more effective to actually have this open style of fence we talk about one of the concepts in septet is natural surveillance and that's using just the people around you people driving by your neighbors that type of thing uh, almost using them like a free security service and uh, you know if they see someone in your backyard then that they don't recognize then hopefully they would call the police and so uh, not having that blockade uh, style fence that provides cover uh, you know is is an open fence works better. Do you think that sometimes people maybe get lackadaisical on maybe taking some of these steps because they feel like maybe they live in a community that might not be perceived as high crime or anything like that? Or, and do you think like those sorts of things might c contribute to bad habits? You know, absolutely. I think people get this mindset like it's not going to happen to me, but the day that we're living in, it can happen to you. And you need to take those precautions to protect yourself, your home, and your business. You know, get to know your neighbors. We encourage our neighborhood watch groups, really get to know the people you live next door to. You know, you can kind of get to know their routine when they leave for work, or maybe they're, you know, coming and picking up the kids from school, even on the weekends, going grocery shopping, attending soccer practices, or whatever the case may be. Get to know their routine. So if something seems out of the norm, you know, we want you to call the sheriff's office we want you to report that suspicious activity or that suspicious person yeah. and and on the routine thing uh, we've had you know a common problem where people have alarms but they only use those alarms when they're on vacation mm. and they really need to use those alarms like when they just go to the store uh, many criminals you know are watching and they you know instead of going door to door that type of thing they're watching for a garage door to open for a car to come out and leave and then they you know if the garage is empty then that's that house has now been targeted and it could be at two in the afternoon again the vast majority of home burglaries happen in the daytime not the night mm. uh it's when people are at school people are at work the homes you know uh are uh, abandoned you know are not, not occupied and so using your alarm even if you're just going going to be gone for an hour or so use your alarm you know you pay for it you have it that's a really a great time to to use it. I can definitely tell you, I can attest to that. Um, actually, scary but true story. About a year ago, the neighborhood that I'm in, um, there was a group of people who had moved in the neighborhood, and they were targeting all the homes, oh and and it, they were like almost like systematically coming down the block. I didn't really know this until um, one of our neighbors told us that th they were doing this, and I was very much a repeat offender of, oh, I'm just going to the gym. I'm not going to turn the alarm on. And I realized that I was leaving my car, even though there's nothing in it but old McDonald's cups. But I realized <laughs> that I was leaving it unlocked. And I had no idea this was going on on my street. And I definitely, mm. you know, sort of changed my habits in just in those small ways of just really being lazy. That's, that was my excuse. <laughs> At least I was being lazy. Well, you know, and I've even seen, we were watching one day the people that come around and put all that junk on your door handle. We were watching this guy as he was doing it, testing to see if he could get the doors open. And so we were waiting for him when he came to our house, and we said, you need to just keep on walking, and if you're smart, you're going to walk right out of this neighborhood because we've been watching what you've been doing, and you need to leave, and we have your picture. And he did. He scurried off and, and ran away, but I, I, I do. I watch that now. Whenever I see people walking up and down the street, I always and tell them Carmen, to go away. In a situation <laughs> like that, uh, you know, you, you did great. You 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 witnessed something. You you confronted the person. You got rid of them. You made your community safer. But did you call law enforcement? We did, and just reported a suspicious person. And and having basically him scurry away, that type of thing, it, it's a disadvantage for us. 
because we need to identify these people. Mm -hmm. It's really a small percentage of the population that commit a vast majority of the crime. And in law enforcement, we're, we're really looking to identify that small percentage of people. And we need to know who they are, where, where they're working, uh, what, what they're doing. Like, you know, this, this gentleman might have a criminal history, but we don't know that he's now, you know, working North Pinellas or a particular city. Uh, we don't know he's maybe working for a legitimate company that does flyers and maybe they don't know he's trying door handles but you know and so identifying him and, and that type of thing is how we might solve a lot of burglaries so well, if if, if, if people see something it's important that you know not only they take you know call first they please call us it's I, I can't stress that enough people think for some reason there has to be a crime before they call us I and, always and, feel guilty calling you guys. And you shouldn't and you shouldn't uh, you know again we're in crime prevention we're trying to prevent crime and so waiting till there's a crime you know it's too late uh, so this so this guy who's pulling on doorknobs and doing something suspicious walking between houses whatever it is he may not have committed a crime yet but that doesn't mean you can't call us absolutely call us because you know we need to identify this person you know one he needs to know that this neighborhood's not going to put up with it they called the police and more importantly we need to know who he is what he's driving you know he might be driving a girlfriend's car where is he living now you know he's gotten out of prison or he moved from out of out of county or somewhere like that he may be a new player in this area that is you know cre creating a lot of havoc doing crimes and we need to find that out who he is and, and once him. we identify him and and that type of thing we may be even looking for that vehicle because it may have committed some other burglaries the week before but we didn't know who was driving it didn't even think about and that. so that's you know it's it's not the law and order where we solve everything in an hour but it's, it's not really, it, yeah, yeah sadly, <laughs> even with commercials um uh it's it's people calling in with these tips and it's these little bits and pieces of information that we piece together and that's how we find these people we identify them and we close and usually when we arrest them we close out numerous cases uh, again because this is what they do well the interesting thread that I've heard through all of our conversations is sort of like the neighborhood coming together how would like a regular person like me or Carmen sort of organize or engage with our neighbors to to make sure we're all on the same page with this yeah, we've got different materials that we can actually give somebody to advertise meetings. Um, you know, we want neighborhoods coming together. We want neighbors sticking together because that's what brings a safe community. That's what we need. This is what we want. Um, you know, less crime in your neighborhood, the better. So, yeah, we can always provide. They can contact us through the, the crime prevention line, the 727-582-2222. And we can definitely set up a neighborhood watch meeting and help you advertise that meeting. Well, that would be good. That would be good. I know for my little... Little house is right around us. We all talk. We let each other know when we're going, you know, away for a while and keep track of who's coming and going. And, you know, we one of our neighbors had just gone and he never goes on vacation and they went on a vacation. And, of course, second day we see some strange car in his driveway and his van's gone. So we call him on his cell phone and we said, um, there's this car in your driveway and your van's gone. He says, oh, I forgot to tell you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I didn't just call the police first on that one. But, you know, he had loaned his van to somebody and they left their car there where they took his van. But, you know, we all do that. We watch each other's houses and, you know, we know when each other is gone and there shouldn't be anybody parking in our driveway. There shouldn't be anybody hanging around. <laughs> well, Carmen, you raised a great question. Um, the Sheriff's Office, we also do offer a vacation home check. Mm. You can call our non-emergency phone number, which is 727-582-6200, and ask for that vacation home check. And, you know, it'll be put into our system, and dispatcher's going to ask a series of questions. Um, where do you live? Of course, that's the number one question. How long are you going to be gone? Um, it is a free service as well. And either a deputy or a volunteer in patrol, um, they'll go out and check they're prone over your home make sure it hasn't been broken into and also they're going to ask for contact information so if we do happen to find maybe a cracked window water running something like that oh. or anything other you know anything else that's other you know serious we'll call you and let you know and advise you hey we checked on your house you know this is what happened or um, you know, of course if nothing does happen you won't hear Yay. from us <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is a free service that we provide so is there any minimum length of time that people need to be away from the property a week or it can be a weekend it can be a a week or six months cool and do you notice if so how would a criminal even know 
How, how does this happen that they know that people aren't even home anymore? Do they target or watch? Well, you know, I, the thing is, is, you know, most communities, when you go into a community, all the homes are pretty much the same. And it, it's assumed that all these houses have some jewelry and some electronics and that type of thing. So they're really looking, again, for that easy opportunity. And, you know, so you want to avoid that. And you also want to avoid your home being potentially targeted. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that might be is if you are away on a lengthy vacation or something like that, you get like the flyer that's on your door mm -hmm. and everyone has taken it off. But yours is on there four days later or you've got two or three newspapers in your driveway or something like that. The other big thing is uh, social media. Uh, people don't realize, and you know, a lot of grandparents or oh, yeah. you know, even parents don't think about this, but their kids, uh, you know, they go away for the weekend and they are immediately posting pictures like, you know, best parents, best grandparents ever, you know, uh, sp spending the uh, weekend at Disney World. Well, then, you know, they're still friends with two, three hundred kids from, you know, since middle school, and uh, they don't speak to half of them anymore, but they're still friends with them. And, you know, one or two bad apples maybe sees that Johnny is gone for the weekend with his grandparents, and in fifth grade, they're at grandma's house for a birthday party, and they were swimming in her pool, and they're like, hey, Johnny's grandmother lives in a really nice house. And I just saw on Facebook they're gone for the weekend. So guess what? Uh, Johnny's grandmother's house has just been targeted through no fault of Johnny's grandmother, but just because Johnny was excited and he's posting that, you know, they're all away for the weekend. So you want to try to avoid that type of thing. You know, wait till you get back. Uh, post, what a great trip we had. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're back home. And now I want to share with you all the, you know, the pictures and things like that. And that way you're not broadcasting that your home is, you know, unoccupied for a weekend or a week at a time. And I'm sure that has added a whole new wrinkle to what you do because, I mean, I see people, I mean, as soon as at the airport, they're like, I'm at the airport. And, you know, you, you know exactly, exactly where they where are they're, and what they're doing the at every <laughs> minute. So I can't imagine how that's opened up a whole new world of of non-crime prevention. <laughs> crime enabling. <laughs> yes, crime enabling. So, I mean, these are just excellent tips, again, that through habit or just not even having the mind of wanting to break into someone's house, we leave ourselves vulnerable. My husband always tells me, Carmen, we don't live in Disneyland. <laughs> you can't just think it's all smiles and giggles. <laughs> it's not the magical experience. No, it's sure. not. <laughs> not. Not coming home to an empty home. No, no, <laughs> I, I don't want to come home to an empty home, so I try to be a good girl and remember that not everybody is nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been, again, another eye open. Every time we do this show, I learned something, right? I do too. This has been great. You guys have been awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. So again, for those people who might be interested in taking part in SEPTED, how do they get in contact with you? It's uh, our, You just contact our main number uh, for crime prevention, uh, 727 area code 582-2222. And, uh, you know, we do the security surveys. If you're interested in uh, signing up for a business watch or neighborhood watch program or any of the numerous topics, we, we talk at civic groups, church groups, uh, homeowners associations, and it's all free of charge. Uh, so we're, we're happy to help in any way we can. Awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> well, I'm going to make sure that tonight when I go home <laughs> that my car doors are locked and that my windows are shut and <laughs> that uh, maybe I could clean out my car <laughs> a little bit too. They're not going to want to steal your McDonald's. They're not going to want that, right? <laughs> well, I think I'm pretty safe there. <laughs> well, Deputy Huey and Deputy Skipper from Pinellas County Sheriff's Office, thank you for coming and giving us all these amazing, wonderful tips. Hopefully everyone listening and watching on YouTube will uh, take something away from this. I'm from the Pinellas County Communications Department, and of course you can hear us on WRXB 1590 AM and 96.5 FM. We look forward to having you listeners join us next month. If you missed any part of this show or like to view past shows, check out our website or catch us on YouTube. I'm Julian Hills. I'm Carmen Lemberg. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to make it a great day.